All right, so normally when you build something, you start from the foundation and you go up from there. Look at this. This yeah. is just unbelievable, the time lapse here. Well, there's a project in downtown Detroit that could change the way cities are built worldwide, and they're doing it from the top yeah. down. Business editor Rob Maloney live downtown with that story and the $64 million build that's really rocking uh, the construction world, Rod. That's right, uh, Jason, Taryn, take a look. This is the exchange building. You may have seen it and you wonder perhaps where's the bottom third? Well, that's the beauty of the build here at the corner of Brush and Gratiot because the building kind of looks like it's floating in midair, sort of like Drone 4. For more than a century, high-rise construction looked like this. Ironworkers casually lunching, seated on girders, hundreds of feet off the ground, their boots freely swinging so high, the pictures alone can make you nauseous. It's an often dangerous, slow-moving business, dependent on and beholden to gravity. New York's One Vanderbilt building is a spectacular 93-story example. Courtesy of their EarthCam time-lapse video, they show us in order to build high, you start with a big hole in the ground. Once pilings get driven home, it can take two, three, or even half a dozen years for a stately behemoth cobbled together with concrete, steel, glass, and copper to take shape. Yet here in Motown, the Exchange Building gives us a decidedly different look at that process. The Exchange Building leans heavily on Detroit's automotive past as a guide to upending age-old construction norms. The Exchange's upper floors rise to the top and snap into place like a child's Lego set. Through considerable research and development, instead of bottom-up, they figured out how to go top-down in striking fashion. The lift build company is owned by Detroit-based Barton Mallow Construction. And we really try and turn the construction site into more of a manufacturing environment. Vice President Joe Benvenuto tells us that modern business realities are behind turning the construction business right side up. First and foremost, make a safer work environment, lower the cost to our end users, and make our trades uh, more productive. We, we know that we're dealing with a deficit of, of labor in the, in the workforce, and uh, we need to try and solve that. Drone 4 now takes the old steel workers' perch to show us how it all comes together. They start by building two giant concrete pillars called spines, and from there the tradespeople build a scaffold around the spines a mere five feet off the ground. As each of the 16 floors gets finished, a million pounds of living space take an eight-hour elevator ride to the top. Once in place, they do the connective finish work. Operating engineer Jamie Wilcox thoroughly enjoys this unique job. I've been in the trades for almost 20 years, and this by far is the most interesting project that I've ever been on. Iron worker Connor Stanley appreciates the improved safety. Instead of us being 200 feet in the air and, you know, in the open, you know, there's windows already on it as the floor goes up to where that kind of eliminates any type of risk or anything like that. So much did Joe Gregorzewski want to be part of this build. He drives to and from Battle Creek every day. The commute did not dim his enthusiasm. First of its kind. I've built dozens, you know, hundreds of buildings the conventional way all over. This is something different, something new, groundbreaking. I wanted to be a part of it. They used computer technology to build the exchange long before they pulled the first foot of conduit. And while the learning curve slowed things early, they tell us they figured out how to move this project along quite smartly. I think it's really rewarding, you know, to just get in your car and look back at this thing at the end of the day after another floor has gone up. And I mean, we're making history here. Well, they figure they're going to be finished building it next spring. And the question, of course, is how much did they save? And in terms of efficiency, 20 to 30 percent is what they think they're saving. So was it time and money? They're still waiting to find out. They have half a dozen floors to put back on it. But I got to tell you, this is pretty impressive out here. Back to you. It's really when we watch it, Rod, our jaws are on the floor. Just the way it goes from top down like that, it's just crazy. It feels like it goes against everything you know. Uh, I, I would be remiss right. if I didn't ask you how many units are going to be available when this thing's done. Ah. All right, well, let me pull out my notes because it's a rather <laughs> lengthy list. Uh, we did say 16 floors, 165 residences, <coughs> 153 apartments, and a dozen condos, and there's also going to be retail and they'll have restaurants on the first floor. Again, 
when they wrap it up next spring. Mixed use, our favorite so cool. kind. So cool. I yeah. love it. Rod, right. thank you. Good what a stuff, great Rod, story. Yeah.